we're gonna try something a little new you guys um because you know my um my sharing is so uh centered around the music that i write that gives me um, and because my internet connection is spotty sometimes I decided we'd try this today where I record most of the, that I have pre-recorded uh, the music and my contemplations from A Course in Miracles. Today I'm looking at um, I Place the Future in the Hands of God. And um, so what we're going to do is kind of like when Jacqueline shares Regina's um videos and things we're gonna um i'm gonna lead us in we're gonna do our meditation then i'm gonna have shauna start the video i made yesterday and uh we'll stop it along the way for comments if there's stuff you want to say or if something comes to me um and we'll just go back and forth that way obviously i'm live with you right here and we just thought it'd be a better way for you to be able to hear the music and the contemplations uh without spotty interruptions <laughs> so let's try that today and we'll all see how how we like it um yeah so i'm gonna lead us in with the uh, uh, meditation oh shauna um am i spotlighted i can't see i am okay i can't see my oh <laughs> That's okay, because I'm, yeah, there we go. For, yeah, that's, that, that's better for editing purposes. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, okay, here we go. So, for the meditation today, I just read this beautiful, inspirational article um, that's posted on the Awakening Together website by uh, Reverend David Hemphill. And this is really beautiful. And he has this um, little part in the article to me that felt like a meditation. So I'm, I'm going to share that with you. Um, oh, Shauna, maybe you could put the link to this article in the chat. It's called The Crystal in the Field, A Journey to Non-Separation, an inspirational article by David Hemphill. It's quite beautiful. But I'm just going to do a little part of it, the part that feels like a meditation. So first, let's ring the bell. Breathe three times and om. Ah, and move into this place of stillness. So here we go. Ah. We gather here again, you and I, in this Awakening Together Sanctuary to co-create what I call an unconditional circle of love, a circle of unconditional love where everything that we like and everything that we do not like is included. We allow ourselves to open to grow and learn and remember who we truly are from everything that we like and everything that we do not like. It's been such an opportunity to be here and to be alive at this moment on this planet. I'm grateful. So, as you just feel yourself where you are let's just listen for a moment to some wisdom from our beloved Reverend David Hemphill 
sit in your heart and cultivate an understanding of what is truest to you. Then when you have found what is truest for you to do, see the beliefs you wear like clothing to protect yourself. Belief in needing safety. Belief in having an opinion. Belief in a me. Belief in time. Belief in distance. Call those beliefs by name and be willing to meet them in inquiry or surrender. So I suggest we take just a couple of moments to do just that. Who is this me? Who is this me that needs safety, comfort, whatever the need may be? In this moment, I surrender and I know that in the stillness, there is hope. It lights the way as I travel far to my certain goal of oneness with love. Blessed be, and so it is. So, okay, I guess I'm ready now, Shauna, for us to start the video. Hey everybody. Well, so I'm trying something new. Let's see how it goes. Let things be exactly as they are. You can't change me and you can't change let things be exactly as they are and you and me will live in peace well I don't know what anything is for unless I listen to that's still small voice telling me this simple truth that everything is for my good. So let things be exactly as they change me and 
you can't change God Let things be Exactly as they are And you and me This body that you see, although I love my body, I am as God created me, and we are all one family. things be exactly as they are you can't change me and you can't change God let things be exactly as they are As of this recording, since I'm trying something a little new this week, um, this is Saturday, and oh, I just want to share, you know, what's been going on since last week. Um, <laughs> the saga of the water continues. <laughs> Two more steps, it seems, in order to get running water into the trailer here. Um, a few years back when Glenn and I bought this property, we were looking for the um, septic tank, which was already on the property. And our neighbor had like a tractor thing, and he helped us find it. And then he piled some rocks on top of it so that we would know where the... Um, opening I forget what, the lid to the uh, sewer system was you know the um, septic system so um, the septic guys came over to to connect the pipes to the septic all the other stuff has been done the trench has been, been dug the pipes have been buried the electric pump has been installed all it needs to do is turn you know turn the on button on and the water supposedly will flow however where does it flow because it's not connected to the septic system so we got to get it connected to the septic system okay so the septic guys came over we found where the septic system is but it has all these <laughs> boulders on top of it so sorry can't do anything for you until you move the boulders so um i called my neighbor he's lovely he came over and he said yeah i did that <laughs> and i've got a machine that will you know move the boulders i'll see you in a couple of days well that was a couple of days ago so i'm still waiting and of course that gives me plenty of opportunity to be anxious and of course because on tuesday I am leaving to go back to Brooklyn for my very final goodbye to Brooklyn. I've just got a few more things to pack up and turn in the keys, etc., etc., and goodbye to Brooklyn. So I'll, I may actually do a broadcast from an empty room <laughs> in Brooklyn while I'm there because it falls over, you know, a, a Sunday. And, um, so we'll see how that goes. But I wanted to get my water hooked up, you know, before I go. Because, of course, I have my kitties now. And I have somebody to come take care of them while I'm away. But, um, you know, I wanted there to be plenty of water and whatever, whatever. So today's Saturday. I've got Sunday and Monday in order for my neighbor to come over and move the rocks. And if he doesn't, then I have to leave. So 
I'm right smack dab into the lesson that I think we talked about last week. I believe it's 181. Um, I trust my brothers who are one with me. And, um, and actually, so I wanted to talk to you, you know, share with you um, my contemplations again on that. Um, but also, um, I wanted to share my contemplations on Lesson 194, I Place the Future in the Hands of God. And maybe we might get to Lesson 195, Love is the Way I Walk in Gratitude. So, um, you know, um, one step in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, as they say. Um, going through a lot of emotions, uh, fears, letting them come, you know, um, listening to a lot of videos, Angela, Regina, and now Gangaji, and then I just saw a wonderful interview that Angelo DeLulo did with Gangaji, like, recently. Oh, I was, like, it was amazing. You can look it up, I think. Angelo DeLulo interviews Gangaji. Um, really gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous. Ah, heart opening. And as I'm listening to, um, that interview this morning, my friend, friend Freddie, who y'all have met because we played together and, um, we've been playing together for years. Um, comes driving up in my driveway. Now, he lives about an hour away in New York State, but he was driving around, and he came over. <laughs> and it was wonderful. We just got finished having um, lunch and, and just a really great talk about life and, you know, what I want to do here on the property, which I'm calling Glory Land. And... It's taking shape, my ideas, and, you know, what Glenn and I had already um, talked about, just plus some, um, you know, new developments as they take shape, and of course, step by step, step by step, um, first thing is to get, you know, a contractor out here, which I think I have now, um, who's going to come in August, to help me clean up the place and straighten up the place and um, get my deck put in and things like that. Um, hopefully we'll get all the water and the deck in um, before winter. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> so we're doing that. Um, so yeah, I've been spending a lot of time you know, by myself, uh, with you guys online in the sanctuary, um, and contemplating and writing music. So, um, I think it was last week when I was talking about, I trust my brothers who are one with me. Um, somebody either put in the chat or something like that. Uh, well, it sounds like it's time for a new song, you know, something like along those lines. And indeed it was. So, um, I've kind of been messing around with this um, song idea. And I've been trying to incorporate uh, real life things that I've been going through. And how they're playing out. And how trusting my brothers who are one with me is showing up in my life. A quick story, really cute, I think, is um, around here we have to take our garbage uh, and compost and stuff. It's, you know, nobody comes to the house to collect it, so you have to drive over to the dump, but we call it a transfer station here in Vermont. And, um, you know, there's a guy there. I mean, I've been doing this since we bought the property in 2020. And, you know, there's a guy there who, uh, he just always kind of looks at me like this, you know, like, who's this person, you know, 
<laughs> He's never really said more than two words to me. And this week, a couple days ago, I went over to drop off a whole bunch of stuff. And he goes, thank you, sir. And then he said, wait a minute, is that correct? He says, I just want to be respectful to you. And I was like, oh my goodness, how sweet of you. And so we had a, we had a really great talk, just standing there in the dump, you know, just really getting to know each other. He's a great guy, um, really super friendly, really lovely. He wasn't being rude to me all these couple of years. Um, he was just trying to, you know, sort of understand how I was presenting myself, you know, like uh, what that meant to him. And it was wonderful. It was just lovely. Um, and so we had fun. We had a lot of fun. And I have a new friend. And, uh, you know, so hi, Steve. I love you. You're really sweet. <laughs> uh, um, and that was a particularly rough day for me, actually. And so after that, I went to the hardware store. I had a breakdown. <laughs> Had a breakdown in the hardware store the cashier was really sweet to me <laughs> i mean the emotions are flowing y'all it's um it's really opening opening Shauna, I want to stop for just a second before we do the song. Okay, thank you. So, first of all, I hope this is working okay and that y'all are hearing uh, hearing better. Okay, good. Um, I just wanted to say um, thank you for the comments in the chats and yes Tina said yes. <laughs> anybody that wants to come visit me over the summer <laughs> and be prepared uh you know we don't know about the water situation yet so this water situation is ongoing right and it's very funny because like I said I am going to leave on Tuesday to go down to um Brooklyn to get the last few things so um, I have to trust my neighbors. I have to trust my, um, you know, everybody around me. I, I see how community building is so important. And so I'm glad that, you know, we're putting such an emphasis on that here at Awakening Together, um, because it is really making an impact on just my everyday life. So, I'm going to let you hear this song because it speaks to a lot of what um, I've been going through lately. But I just wanted to stop for a second and say thank you for the lovely comments in the chat. So, okay. Okay, Shauna, let's go back. I trust my brothers that are one. One with me eternally. I trust my sisters that are one with me in every situation. When I'm driving on the interstate, I don't want to hate the one who takes. So I pull over and I let him pass I'm not in a rush anyway I'll never know why he's so speedy Just maybe there's an emergency I know my anger makes me lose my peace so I'll step aside and I'll say I trust my brothers who are one with me One with me, eternally 
eternally. I trust my sisters who are one with me in every situation. Then I was standing in the hardware store Waiting for some keys to my front door I was feeling so much grief from The passing of my beloved I started crying when it's time to pay the clerk said, are you okay? It took my breath away. Life is not cooperating with me today. She said, sometimes I feel the same way. I trust my brothers who are one with me because they're one with me eternally. I trust my sisters who are one with me in every situation. You never know what someone's going through. It could be you who's feeling really blue. Because there is so much to do. It really helps along the way To say, I trust my brothers who are one with me Because they're one with me eternally I trust my sisters who are one with me in every Place the future in the hands of God, the hands of God, the hands of God. I place my future in the hands of God in every situation. Okay, Shauna, let's stop for just a second. Oh, yay. Well, I just I just wanted to check in and see if anybody had anything they wanted to say. I just, um, uh, oh, Shauna, thank you so much for that kind remark in the, in the chat. It's, um, it really is a thing where, um, I'm having internet problems over here, so I, I, I'm I'm hoping that this does work better. Um, thanks, everybody. Thanks for, oh, thank you, George. Thanks for the comments. That's really sweet. Um, you know, I with such a heart opening, with such a shattering and a, a surrendering, it really gives me um, compassion. I mean, it really, really puts me in the place of compassion for people. And, um, you know, hopefully I won't always be breaking down at the grocery store and the hardware store and everything. I'm sure I won't be eventually. Um, but it's so wonderful to see people, um, you know, treat me so kindly. And I just love that. So it gives me... Um, it gives me real confidence in placing the future in the hands of God, which I'm going to comment on now in the, in the recording. So let's go back to the recording. To walk gently along this path. Oh, lesson 194. I place the future um, in the hands of God. So I was just going to back up and say, in case you're, 
you know, not following me or you want to follow, follow me. Um, I'm in the A Course in Miracles workbook, lesson 194. I place the future in the hands of God. Today's idea takes another step toward quick salvation. <laughs> and a giant stride it is indeed, exclamation point. So great the distance is that it so great the distance is that it encompasses it sets you down just short of heaven with the goal in sight and the obstacles behind your foot has reached the lawns that welcome you to heaven's gate <laughs> glenn used to get a kick out of that line oh heaven has a lawn and a gate <laughs> the quiet place of peace where you await with certainty the final step of god how far are we progressing now from Earth? Wow. How close are we approaching to our goal? How short the journey still to be pursued? Huh. That's interesting. Interesting um, inquiry questions, maybe. How far are we progressing now from Earth? Exclamation point. And who's asking? <laughs> who's this I that needs to be progressing from Earth? I wonder if I can really embody being on Earth at the same time encompassing this meaning progressing from earth and being earthly bound or earthly attached but still living here like embodying you know our teaching um trusting along the way trusting my brothers but trusting that no one has a spiritual authority over others huh And so I kind of, so it's interesting, like, <coughs> excuse me, what pops in for me is, you know, I want people, certainly, well, I mean, for all of us, I'm sure, you know, I want people to behave the way I see things, the way I want people to behave, you know, um, and that's not what we're, talk what we're talking about at all. I'm not talking about behavior. I'm just talking about looking through the behavior, past the behavior, into what's really one, you know, what we're, how we really are one. And I've said this before, and that's why, you know, that encounter in the hardware store that I wrote, my little verse here, was so touching to me. I think I was so open to seeing the love from this cashier that was... Um, had such concern in her eyes. Of course, I was I was crying. So, you know, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't all that bawling, but I was like, <laughs> you know, like that whimpering, I guess. You know, um, it was lovely. Like, it, you know, just my daily encounters with folks are so gorgeous, and even with the guy that was tailgating me, like. Um, I've gotten to where I don't sit there and stew about it, you know, like, ah, why are you on my tail? Blah, 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 blah. I just wait for the next opportunity to, to um, pull over so he can pass, you know? I mean, like, we, we have two lane roads basically around here, so I have to wait till there's like a little gravel pit or a side, you know, thing to pull off. Um, and I do that, you know, because I'm really like, I want to... <laughs> I don't want to get a speeding ticket. I don't want to do anything. I just want to, you know, go the speed limit. And a lot of people around here, you know, whatever. Just people don't, you know, want to go the speed limit. We're going to go 70, 80 in a 40 miles zone. Okay. So instead of me fighting in my mind with that, um, just pull over. Let them pass. You know, it's no skin off my nose. I am not in a hurry. If anything, I've come to understand lately one of the things is I'm not in a hurry 
I don't have to prove anything. Um, I'm not in a hurry. I hope you like me, but I don't. If you don't, I can't do anything about that. I'm not going to try to make you like me. Um, I'm just going to trust. I'm going to place the future in the hands of God, and that means moment by moment because this is the present. And so, what's you know, what am I going to do? Think about the next couple of things. Of course, I can fantasize certainly about all kinds of things, as I've told you before. But I trust my brothers who are one with me. I place the future in the hands of God. So, how short the journey still to be pursued. Interesting. So, I am on this journey. I am in this three-dimensional reality. Um, I guess I am pursuing a goal, which is to create you know, a, uh, some sort of intimate, you know, spiritual retreat center here. Um, and we'll see how that shapes up. And I do have ideas about it. I have written my vision down and all of that. Um, and so that's a pursuit. Who's pursuing? Like, um, this is, so compelling for me to be here and to do this or just to be here and witness the unfolding of it of course it's some you know certainly uh you know doings through me um but it's going to involve a whole bunch of people that i don't know yet you know um yeah there's work to be done there's um <laughs> buildings to be built there's crops to be grown, I want to grow, you know, have a nice garden. And I know all of that is possible and within reach. And it's my vision and I'm compelled by that vision. And I feel like it's a vision of service to the community. Um, but I'm not doing it. I place the future in the hands of God. I see I'm seeing how it's unfolding, and I know part of that unfolding is to really um, connect with those around me and trust those around me. You know, I trust my neighbor who is one with me, <laughs> who's going to move these rocks. I trust the septic uh, folks, the septic company who is one with me, who's going to connect, you know, the water to my septic. And I trust, you know, the process that is one with me that I will have water in this um mobile home and um, however long that takes or doesn't take or whatever the steps are um, I'm just trusting it trusting the process okay um, paragraph okay two. Shana let's stop for a second let's stop for, for a second Yeah, I just wanted to stop and see if anybody had uh, anything they might want to say. I I just felt that so deeply. Um, I place the future in the hands of God. It's meaning something so different to me before, I think. Um, I'm not trying to block out uh, bad things. You know, when I think before when I said um, I'm... I place the future in the hands of God. I, I was going, okay, if I put the future in the hands of God, then everything will be okay. Well, maybe it won't, you know? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you know, in I can't control world events. I can't control people's behavior. All I can do is be open and know that I'm in the right place at the right time doing what I'm called to do, like David's um, contemplation in the crystal that he that he spoke of earlier, um, cultivate of cultivate an understanding of what is truest to you, and um, that's really that's really it. So when today when I say I place the future in the hands of God, you know I'm I'm 
knowing that I'm in the perfect spot right here, right now, and that I'm cultivating what is truest for me. And that will direct my, um, my doings, you know? So, okay. So, um, yeah, it's a quarter two. We probably won't get through my whole um, thing, but it's okay. I'm just, you know, interacting with it and new, um, contemplations are coming to me as, as, as I'm listening to it. So, um, if there's anything you want to say or anything or type, just go, go for it or unmute. Um, but let's go back to what I was to the video. 94, I place the future in the hands of God. It says, accept today's idea and you have passed all anxiety. Accept today's idea and you have passed all anxiety, all pits of hell, all blackness of depression, thoughts of sin and devastation brought about by guilt. Yes, I accept. I accept today's idea. I trust, I place the future in the hands of God. Because look at these promises. Past all anxiety, all pits of hell, all blackness of depression, all thoughts of sin and devastation brought about by guilt. Now, isn't that... Um, wow. Isn't that something to allow to be manifested? through this learning device, through this body, through this um, experience in this three-dimensional reality. Um, wow. Accept today's idea and you have released the world from all imprisonment by loosening the heavy chains that locked the door to freedom on it. Loosening those chains. Just, you know, just allowing yourself to be this willing uh, channel for God's love to move through me, to move through you and I, and to loosen the chains of imprisonment that locked the door to freedom for myself and for others. Again, Marion Williamson's quote, um, as we liberate ourselves from our fears, our very presence will automatically liberate others. And I'm sort of reflecting on feel the fear and do it anyway. You know, I mean, like, um, that's a popular um, phrase. Um, Yeah, it's being done. Feel the fear and do the practice. Feel the fear, practice the practice, and let it be done through me anyway. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yeah. You are saved, and your salvation thus becomes the gift you give the world because you have received <sighs> that's the embodiment that I, that's the embodiment that i'm talking about i want to embody this and live this uh through this learning device this flesh and blood this space here of four and a half acres that i call glory land um your salvation thus becomes the gift you give the world because you have received. I have received so much. I have so much love, so much friendship, so much support. And I mean, you guys, yes, look at the support. It's incredible. I love you so much. Thank you. Oh. <sighs> Okay. Paragraph three. We're only on paragraph three. <laughs> In no one instant is depression felt or pain experienced or loss perceived. In no one instant sorrow can be set upon a throne and worshipped faithfully. In no one instant can one even die. 
In no one instant can one even die. So Glenn's passing, um, you know, has really baffled me in, for many reasons because I do think of uh, the timing of his passing at, right at the beginning of this project called glory land that we both for four years basically have been living and breathing um together breathing life into it and in no one instant can one even die so in an instant one can leave their body obviously But in no one instant can one even die. So, so that life which streamed through a body that I called Glenn is still with me. That life. It's still with you. It is you. It is me. That's the same life. That's the oneness that we're talking about. That's why I, I can trust my brothers who are one with me. And so each instant given unto God in passing with the next one given him already is a time of your release from sadness, pain, and even death itself. I place the future in the hands of God. Each instant given unto God in passing with the next one given him already is a time of your release from sadness, pain, and even death. Hmm. Release from sadness. I'll take it. There is this, uh, and I feel like, you know, that's part of the body, and I'm not a body, I am free, but the part of, you know, this thought process and this sadness that gets stuck in here and uh, replays and replays um, you know I can I can be released from that and I am released from that release from sadness pain and even death itself God holds your future as he holds your past and present. They are one to him, and so they should be one to you. Yet in this world, the temporal progression still seems real, and doesn't it so? Wow. This holographic experience seems really real. I know. Okay, we're on the holodeck, folks. <laughs> you Star Trek fans, um, we're on the holodeck without the safety, with the safeties off. <laughs> um, wow, it still seems so real, and so you are not asked to understand the lack of sequence really found in time. The lack of sequence really found in time. You are but as to let the future go and place it in God's hands. So, so in God's hands. And now, now I feel wonderful. So, so in God's hands. And now, now I feel wonderful, beautiful. So, so in God's hands. And now, now I feel wonderful. So, so in God's hands, and now, now I feel wonderful, beautiful. Because the past will punish you no more, and future dread will now be meaningless. Wow. I'll take that. Future dread will now be meaningless. Boy, I have been putting some meaning into my thoughts of future dread. Um, yeah, that's no fun. <laughs> How about maybe I release that one? <laughs> release.
Release the future is the next paragraph. Release the future for the past is gone and what is present freed from its bequest of grief and misery, of pain and loss, becomes the instant in which time escapes the bondage of illusions where it runs its pitiless, inevitable course. Then is each instant which was slave to time transformed into a holy instant when the light that was kept hidden in God's Son is freed. To bless the world. That's my goal. To be an open channel for this blessing to the world. My life is about service. This is, I am here for service. I am here for service. Now is he free and, and all his glory shines upon a world made free with him. To share his holiness. Now, you know, earlier in the course it says, I am the holy son of God himself. So I am the holy child of God, you know, so are you. I mean, we are, that's what we truly are. It's interesting to call yourself holy, isn't it? So I think of it many times as the word whole, W-H-O-L-E, holiness. Um, I am whole in reality. Let me live into that wholeness. Let me be willing to let that wholeness express through me. I am willing. And in that willingness, the fear is gone. <laughs> okay. I'm going to finish the um, lesson, but I just got to hit to play in my defenselessness, my safety lights. I mean, I know I keep playing it. I hope you enjoy hearing it. Um, here it goes. In my defenselessness, my safety lies, and this awakening has come as a big surprise. In my defenselessness, my safety lies, my safety lies, oh, my safety lies, when I feel threatened. By this changing world Its twists of fortune And its bitter chests The world is illusion with guilt and with shame With guilt and attack over and over again The victim of the world I see I am the power of Let it be Oh, let it be In my defenselessness My safety lies And this awakening Has come as a big surprise in my defenselessness, my safety lies, my safety lies, oh, my safety lies. And so I look past my dreams today. And all my fears I gladly toss away Cause I am surrendered and I stand secure Deep in the silence, weakness disappears 
listen to the voice for love that guides my path. Hallelujah. Ah. My defenselessness, my safety lies, and this awakening has come as a big surprise. In my defenselessness, my safety lies, my safety lies, oh, my safety lies, oh, my safety lies. I know I keep singing this song. It's becoming like, let things be exactly as they are, but it's. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks everybody. I really appreciate you um, joining me in this experiment and we'll see, uh, see how it, see how you like it. See how it works. Thank you, Shauna. I appreciate it so much. Listen to the voice that likes you. She will tell you that we are one and she will tell you how to act like it. Okay. Love you. See you next time.